excited to be here with you guys today. Uh, we are um, going to be doing a call today on being all in. Being all in. And I got to tell you guys something. People ask me all the time. They say, Michael, Michael, man, you're so lucky. You're just so lucky. Amazing kids. You've got amazing kids. You've got an amazing wife. you got an amazing life. You've got an amazing business. You know, man, every, you're just lucky. You're, you're, you're so lucky. You've, you've just... Amazing. You own your life. You own your life. What is that? What's that all about? And it, I, I thought about it, thought about it, and I thought about it. And what it is, is Michael is always all the way in. I'm in. I'm all the way in. Being all in is what it's all about. I want to give you guys some examples. And I'm going to give you an assortment of examples, so it's going to touch everybody. It's going to touch everybody on the call. It will touch everybody on the call. Being all in. I'm going to start out with being playing football. Can you guys play half of a football game? Can you play half of a football game? No. I'll tell you a story. There's a football player named Brett Favre. He played for a team. He's 40 years old, just turned 40. He was playing for a team for many, 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 many years. Went to the Super Bowl. Amazing player. Just an amazing, gifted player. And he wanted to go to another Super Bowl. Well, his team he was playing for, they, they weren't all in. They weren't all in. So he retired from that team to, to get out of his contract. And, the, and the, the team told him, if you just retire and you never play for another team, we're going to pay you gazillions of millions of dollars in your contract. Please don't play for anybody else. And don't play, for, don't ever play for the Vikings. We, we don't ever want you to play for the Vikings. So he, he retired from that team. He went to another team. And that team was not all in. They were not all in. He retired from that team. He went to another team the second year. It was the Jets. Retired, went to the Jets. He got playing with them. Realized they weren't all in. He was. They weren't. He went to the Vikings. Now, now his old team said, man, we never want you to do be with the Vikings because that was their rival team. So what did he do? This year, he's 40 years old, he had his best year, best stats ever in his career, and he's 40 years old. The most pass completed, the least amount of interceptions, the highest, the highest rankings of everything he could do. He came to the playoff game, and he's playing in a playoff game, and his running backs weren't all in. They didn't believe they deserved to go to the Super Bowl. They're down on the end zone. They're ready to go in for a touchdown. He A simple handoff to a running back that you do millions of times. The running back didn't open his arms enough where Brett could put the ball in. There's a fumble. They could have had a touchdown easily. No problem. They do it thousands of times. But guess what? The running back wasn't all in. He didn't believe he deserved to go to the Super Bowl. You know, and then his linemen, his linemen are, are, are not protecting him. He gets tackled. He gets hurt, bad hurt, gets, goes off the sidelines, gets taped up, goes back in the game. Goes back in the game because why? He was all in. All in. See, people don't understand that the average person says, why would this guy do this? He loves the game. He loves the game. He is all in. All in. And he's going to do that. He's going to go to win the Super Bowl because he's all in. Guys, you cannot play half of a football game. How about another example? Being all in. How about reading a book? Can you guys read half a book? Can you read half a book? No. Can you understand what Michael Blow he meant in success in 10 steps if you read one chapter? How about five chapters? No. You've got to read the whole book. You've got to read the whole book. You can't read half of a book. Not possible. So, in other words, when we wrote Success in 10 Steps, Richard Dennis recorded me. 
And he said, here's how we'll write the book. Michael, he said, you've got all that information in your head. I don't know how you want to say it or what you want to say, but you just say it. And I'll, and I'll transcribe what you say to a Word document. He said, my recorder runs for about two hours. I'll call you up and he says, I'll turn the machine on and just say, talk. And when you're done, when the machine's full, I'll say, stop. I'll transcribe what came from your head through your heart to the page. I'll transcribe it. Then you edit it and you change it and make it sound like you wanted it to sound if you didn't make it sound like you were wanting it to sound. So that was all those years of experience in the industry, chapter by chapter by chapter by chapter. Richard would record me again. He would record me again. He'd record me again. He'd transcribe it. He'd send me the Word document. I would edit it. I would put it back, send it back to him. That's how we wrote the book. That's how powerful networking secrets was written. Same way. When people say, wow, I could have wrote that book. You told my story. Right. It's because that book was from my life experiences. So I'm pulling off of my life experiences in the industry. Not pulling any punches. Don't sugarcoat it. It's told the way it is. I told it the way it is. You know what? Upset a lot of people because they don't want people to upset their little apple cart. All these so-called experts that are saying, oh, go make a list of your friends and family. Oh, oh, go buy leads. The lead companies hate me. They hate me because we have devastated their lead business because why? Leads don't work. Buying leads don't work. 30 years in this industry, I have never, ever met anybody that built a downline as a duplicating organization in network marketing by buying leads. Why? It's not duplicatable. Not duplicatable. So reading a book, imagine reading one chapter. Read half the book. Can you be all in if you haven't read the book? Can't be. You cannot be. When we wrote the book, my other business partner, Dave Cones, I said, Dave, I sent him a copy of the ebook. Dave, have you read the book? Man, Dave's busy. He's an engineer. He's a busy guy, busy guy, busy guy. He's got three sons, got a wife, three kids, three sons. He's busy. He's real busy. His one son's uh, going to the missionary to, to, to be a, uh, the ministry, to be a, a pastor. You know, he's busy, busy, busy. Didn't have time to read the book. Didn't have time to read the book. I kept telling him, Dave, read the book. Got to read the book. Give me some feedback, Dave. Dave, Dave, read the book. Dave, read the book. Finally, Dave read the book. Read the whole book. He didn't just read one page, one chapter, half of a book. He read the whole book. He says, Michael, this is good. I said, okay, Dave. That's what I wanted to hear. I wanted your feedback. Give me your feedback. I need your feedback. I need your feedback. So how can you build your network marketing business being half in? You have to be all the way in. You have to be all the way in. You cannot read half a book. You cannot play half of a football game. It's not possible. How about being married? Can you guys be half married? Some people are, and that's why they get divorced. They're not all in. They're not all in. I was blessed, blessed beyond measure, by having a mother and father that were married that didn't love each other. I could see what not loving somebody was like. They got married because my dad said, well, he said the sex was good, so I married her. I said, why'd you marry? He said, well, I felt sorry for her, and the sex was good. Now, i got to tell you something. That's not what a marriage is about. A marriage is about loving someone until death us do part. Loving someone until death us do part. You cannot be half married. You have to be all the way married. You have to be. There's no other way to do it. So I was blessed to see my mother and father, married 25 years, didn't even like each other, much less love one another, and I was blessed. My father's sister, my Aunt Honey, you know the story. My Aunt Honey and my Uncle Al, they were both married young to two other people, and the wife and the husband of the other was both alcoholics. They were friends. When they would go meet each other, my Aunt Honey and Uncle Al would visit and hang out and got to know one another while the other spouses drank and got drunk together. So they ended up divorcing the first two that they were married to and married each other married for over 50 years. Married for over 50 years. 
had an amazing life. And I watched them. I saw the love in their eyes. I saw the affection that they had. And I knew, wow, they love one another. They love one another. So when I started dating and I was looking for a wife, I was looking for somebody that I would love, just fall in love with, and be the person, be the person that I'd want to spend the rest of my life with. I'd want to spend the rest of my life with this person. I met Linda. Now, you guys know the story. My parents took me out of school. They took me out of school when I was 16 because in Florida you can take your kids out of school when they're 16. Legally, put me to work in my dad's garage. I was so blessed that my parents did that. Because they did that, I met Linda at my father's garage when her mom came up to the garage looking for a mechanic to fix her car, repair her car. Some neighbors said, go to Frank's garage. He's an honest man. He'll fix your car. He won't rip you off. So I met Linda working at my father's garage. Now I got to tell you, I got to tell you something. I'm 16 years old. Linda was 15. I'm 16. You know, guys, you, you know what I'm talking about. Your hormones are raging. I mean, you know. And when Linda and I started dating, Linda told me we started dating. And she said, you know, my mother was a virgin when, I got, when she got married, and I will be too. Because that was her belief. That's what she wanted. So I had to honor that or not date her. So I honored that. I honored that. Why? Because I was all in. I was all in. Now, I've got to tell you, there was other girls that said, Michael, I want to go out with you because they wanted to have sex with me. They told me so. And I said, you know, gosh, that would be like my mom and dad, just sex. They don't love one another. So why would you ever have sex with somebody? I, I think that's crazy. I think you've got to love somebody, love somebody to be all the way in and committed to a relationship till death us do part, till death us do do part. That's being all the way in. All the way in. When Linda and I got married, we dated for three years and seven months, got married at 19 and 20. I told Linda, I said, babe, I was an abused child. Do you know that? I don't want to have kids. Linda loved me so much that she figured she could love me enough that I would finally love myself and want to have kids. She never pressured me about having kids. After 10 years of marriage, I finally grew up and knew I could be a dad, knew I could be a, an amazing father to, to children. I talked to Linda, told her, I want to be a dad. She started crying. She said, I never thought you were going to say that. I never thought you were going to say it. But Linda was willing to go without children because she loved me that much. She was all the way in. She was all the way in. She wasn't half married. She was all the way in. Committed 100%. Ten years of marriage, we were blessed with an amazing son, Matthew. And then two years later, blessed with an amazing daughter, Amanda Carmen. Just blessed beyond, beyond words. Why? Why are we so blessed? Because we were both all the way in. All the way in. Committed. 100%. No turning back. What's wrong with marriages today? People say, I'm going to try it. No, no, no. No, you can't try it. You're either 100% in or don't do it. Don't do it. Now, what's this got to do with network marketing? When you guys, when you ladies... Understand the five pillars and you use those five pillars as your blueprint to pick a company. And you pick a company that's going to be here to pay your children's children, then you've got to be 100% committed. You have to be all in. There's no looking back. There's no looking up. When we got in the business, I told my wife, I said, babe, 
we're going to become the number one presidential distributor in this company. We're going to have to work really hard. We're going to work long at nights. We're going to work hard to make this happen. Are you with me? Yes. When I told Linda, I, when I was looking to figure this business out, I told my wife, I said, Babe, I'm going to join enough companies until I figure this out. She says, Why? I said, Because I know somewhere, somehow this works. I'm going to figure out the formula. So I joined over 100 companies in a two and a half year period to figure out that business models drive the behavior in the field. You cannot change it. It is what it is. It will always be what it is. And I determined that you needed to have these five pillars in place for you to have maximum success. And people say to me all the time, oh, my company is massively successful. That's not what I'm talking about. One of the oldest companies in the industry is the most profitable company in the industry because they pay their distributors less money than any other company pays. Many companies pay 30, 40%. They pay about 18% to their distributors in the field. Well, some of the worst companies pay 30. This is 18. So no wonder the companies are so massively successful and they can build all these big buildings and brag and shove it in the distributor's face. We're debt free. We ripped you off so bad, we were able to build this $200 million building. And people don't get it. Why? Because they're not all in. Not one time did Linda question the tens of thousands of dollars that I was spending, investing, and in figuring out that business models drive the behavior in the field. Not one time did she question me while I was figuring out the five pillars. Never questioned me. Never doubted me. Ever. Not one time. She didn't say, have you had enough? Never. No. She was with me, committed 100%. She was 100% all in. All in. All in. I did consulting for network marketing companies after that to figure out the inside. And guys, I charged them a lot of money. And over the next year and a half, I made back all the money I spent joining all those other companies. It gave me a clear perspective from the corporate side of the network marketing business model. Hmm. Now here's the point. You got to be all in. When I made that commitment to Linda to be the number one presidential distributor in the company, I said, we're going to work hard. We're going to, we're not even going to look up. We're going to do this. And we did. And she was with me 110%. Not one time questioning, doubting at all. Never. Why? Because she was all in. Why? Because she loves me until death us do part. She trusts me until death us do part. That's being all the way in. Being all the way in. So, when you pick your network marketing company. Do you think it's worth reading the policies and procedures, the contract? Or do you want to read one or get a letter in the mail that says, like Richard Dennis, making, making uh, $44,000, dollars a month, and he gets a letter from the company that we're invoking uh, Section 17-B, uh, we're terminating the contract. We're going to go direct sales. We don't need you guys anymore. Bye. Do you think maybe if you're all the way in, you're going to at least be enough of a professional to read your policies and procedures, your contract? Most people on this call don't even know where theirs is. They don't know if it's three pages or 300 pages. They don't have a flipping clue. They're out here blindly trying to build a business, and they don't know what they're doing. It amazes me. Absolutely amazes me. I wrote the book and I begged you guys, send me, send me your why. 
Samir, why? Why are you doing the business? People, they don't even know why they're alive, why they're married. They don't have a clue why they're a parent. Because they haven't taken the time. Why? They're not all in. I want to live my life up until the day I die, and when I die, I want to be completely wore out and slide into that grave sideways. Loving life, living life, because I'm all the way in. Always have been. There's no sticking your toe in the water to see how deep it is. No. You've got to get all the way in. So when you pick your company, i got to tell you, when I picked my network marketing company, I called the founder and I said, tell me what your business plan is. And he didn't stutter. He said, well, Michael, we have a 100-year business plan. I said, really? I said, tell me about that. He says, well, we're going to do it because we're doing it with technology. We're going to compete 100 years from now because we're going to be on the cutting edge of technology. So instead of buying software to run the company from a software company, they built their own. They hired their own programmers, built it themselves so they could improve it as they needed to. 100-year business plan. Guys, that's why I get fired up. That's why I'm excited because I know in my heart of hearts, I'm on this phone with you guys here today, and I know that what I'm doing today will be here to pay my children's children. And what Linda and I are doing today, we're building a foundation that will be here so strong, it will be here for a hundred years for our children's children. Now, what is it that you're leaving your grandchildren? I pray for you. I pray to you, for you, that you are leaving them a legacy of critical thinking. At the headline at Mentoring for Free, go to the Mentoring for Free website if you haven't seen the sub-headline. It says Mentoring for Free. Underneath it is what's called a sub-headline. And it is where you learn how to think, not what to think. Where you learn how to think, not what to think. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? Because when you teach people how to think, they stop becoming robots. Just because the government said this, why do you have to agree to that? Because? Because they said so? Question it. Question everything. Become a critical thinker. Think for yourself. Don't become part of the status quo. Become the leader that you were born to be. Become the leader that you were born to be. You were not an accident. I don't care what your parents told you. You were not an accident. You were, God intended you to be here. And you are here. You're here for a reason. And that reason is your why. When you figure out your why, you will be all the way in. You guys, you cannot play half of a football game. You can't. You cannot read half of a book. And you cannot be half married. It is not possible. And you cannot be halfway in your network marketing business. It does not work. You've got to be 100% in. Once you've got your five pillars company, don't look up. Use the system. Use the skills that we can teach you. Learn to use the system. Become that leader that you were intended to be. Stop listening to the naysayers. Stop listening to people that don't have what you want. I refuse to take advice from somebody that doesn't own their life. It would be like if you 
wanted to become a real estate investor for whatever reason. You want to buy real estate. Great. And you're taking advice from somebody that's never owned real estate. It's like taking uh, advice. It's like taking advice, marriage counseling, from somebody that's never been married. Or how about coaching a football team when you've never played the game? How can you do it? You cannot. So why would you take advice Listen to somebody about your home-based business when they work for somebody else and they're enslaved to them. Why? Only take advice from people that have what you want. Now, i got to tell you something. If you want to become a millionaire, hang around with millionaires. Real flippin' simple. Real simple. If you want to become a millionaire, hang around with millionaires. If you want to become an alcoholic, hang around with people that drink. Is that, is that too harsh? Is that too plain? I don't think so. Not if you want to own your life. The people that got on this call today, I believe, are people that want to own their life. And owning your life has a price. It's called work. Work on you. For you to make more, you have to become more. For you to make more, you have to grow into the leader that will attract other people to you. You have to attract those other people to you. It's the only way this works. You have to become of value to other people. What we do with the Mentoring for Free system, with the MFF toolkit in the back office, we teach people how to become professional pointers. Do not, be, do not, do not make it about you. Do not make it about you. Don't make it about you. It cannot be about you. When you do, if you make it about you, you will never own your life. You will never be able to take off. In July, my wife and I, we celebrate our 39th wedding anniversary. We're going to be on a cruise. We're going to be in, at St. Petersburg, Russia. We're going to be doing a cruise. And on our anniversary, we're going to be at an island off the coast of Sweden for the day spending our anniversary with a bunch of cool people that we want to be on a one-month cruise with. Yeah? Why? Because Linda and I are all in. And we are all in to help you own your life. We are 100% all in to do coaching calls, answer your questions, do what we can do to help you own your life. Because we are so blessed. We have a life today that most people only dream of. And we want to give that gift to you guys. And we don't know who those people are. You've got to step up to the plate. You've got to step up to the plate. You've got to raise your hand and say, it's me. It's me. I have openly said Linda and I are not going to retire from the industry until we've helped 10 people surpass us in income and personal development. I want you to think about what I just said. I didn't say 10 people in my network marketing company. I said 10 people surpass us in income and personal development. Now I want to ask you guys a question. Do you think we will ever retire? If Linda and I keep growing as a person, as a couple, why would I ever want to retire? There's no reason to. When you do what you love doing, you just keep doing it. People ask my mentor all the time. They say, Tom, 
You travel the world, man, 365 days a year, about 320. You're, you're, you're in another foreign country somewhere traveling, doing stuff. He said, I love to travel. I love to help people own their lives. He said, I'm in perfect health. Why shouldn't I do this while I'm in perfect health? When I get like really, really, really old and I can't travel, then maybe I'll take it easy. But right now I'm in perfect health. Why? My mentor is all the way in. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what we wish, pray for you guys, that you get this message, that you are all the way in. Be all the way in. You can't be half married. You can't be halfway in a network marketing business. You can't play half a football game. And you cannot read half of a book. You have to be all the way in. I want to thank you guys for your amazing love and support being here and being on these calls. And I truly hope that this message reaches you at some level. Thank you so much. God bless.